In this video, we talk about a few basic functions for exploring your data frame in R. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. So first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and set my working directory and then import my data as a data frame. And I have another video on how to do that. So if you need help importing a data frame, uh, check out the description below. I'll have a link to that video on how to import it. So of course, the first thing I can go ahead and do to check out my data frame is to just run the data frame and we see it printed down here. And depending how many columns and rows you have, like it might get skewed. Like we see one of my columns drop down here. So it looks kind of funny. And you know, it's a lot of information Information, but you can kind of get an idea that it imported properly. Uh, another thing we can go ahead and do is the end row function. I throw the name of our data frame right in between the parentheses. And of course, I can name my data frame whatever I want. I just call it DF, nice and short, easy to type in DF for data frame. But you could call it election, you could call it stats, numbers, anything you want. You could call it whatever. You could call it Nathan if you wanted to. Doesn't matter. It's just, you know, whatever you call it. So whatever you called it up here uh, is what you call it down here. So n row gives us the number of rows, 31,242. Uh, also, there's n call for column. And you can run that real quick. And we see that we got six columns. So we can get our number of rows, number of columns. Or you can just do dimension, D-I-M and D -D -I or D-F. Run that real quick and we get the number of rows and the number of columns outputted at the same time. So these can be helpful for figuring out, you know, the size of your data frame that you're working with. And then a couple other functions that can be helpful for checking out your data is head. So if we run the head function, and so it gives us the first six rows of data in our data frame. So we can kind of get an idea of what we're working with and how the content is laid out and structured. Alternatively, we could go ahead and Say if we wanted 10 rows, we could go ahead and set another argument in our function and run it real quick. And now it'll give us the first 10 rows of data. I mean, we could throw in 100 if we wanted to and, you know, get get even more data if we want to. So that's that's the head. And it's just a great way to kind of get an idea of what your data looks like. Make sure it looks like you think it think it should look. Alternatively, there's tail and tail shows the bottom records. So the t head shows the top six. Uh, tail shows the bottom six, so we get the bottom six records. Um, of course, we could go ahead and throw in another argument here. If we wanted to show the last 10 records, we could go ahead and do that by adding 10 here in our function. Another handy function for looking at your data frame and checking it out is the structure function, and it's str. You're probably used to seeing str as string. However, in R, it means structure. So big difference between string and structure. It's throwing me off a bunch of times, but R and R, STR is structure. And we throw in our data frame in here and get the structure. So it gives us how many observations there are, how many different variables. So basically, you know, rows and number of columns. And then it breaks down the different columns and what the information means. So we got state, it's a character. And so it gives us some of the, the top few elements in our data frame right there. Then we did country, it tells us that this is also a character and it shows us the, the first few countries. Same with candidate, party, total votes. And we see total votes is an integer and we see that it's a number. One is a character, true, false, true, false, and so on. And so it just tells us how R is interpreting the data and we can make sure that it's interpreting like we like we want it to. For example, we might think that this true, false should actually interpret as a logical. So if we're doing some analysis, we might need to change the values in our one column to actually be logical values. Now, if we look at party real quick, we see that R is reading it as character data and character data just means it's like a string, like you can't really organize it or anything like that. When in reality, party is probably categorical data. And so we might need to go ahead and change how R is reading our party data. And if we're, we want it to be read as categorical, data, it would say factor here. So factor would show up if this was broken down into categories. Same concept with candidate, I guess. There's only so many candidates running unless there's write-ins and stuff like that. But candidate might be categorical data as well, depending how we want to go ahead and organize our data and run analysis on it and all that type of stuff. But anyway, the structure function tells us how R reads it, you know, as it is when we import the data. So that can be very handy to know. Another function that is useful for exploring your data is the the summary function. So we'll run that real quick. And it breaks down the different characteristics of our different columns. So when it's character data, it doesn't do much. It just tells us that how many how much data is in there. And then 
you know, the class and mode and its character. So it doesn't give us much information, but if it was a factor or something like that, it'd tell you how many different categories there are and how many of each category there are. So that can be quite handy. Uh, but when you get into numerical data, it gives you the minimum, the first quartile, median, mean, third quartile, max, etc. So it shows you more information when you're de dealing with numeric data. So if you have a lot of numerics, that can be very handy to kind of see how your data might be skewed. And so those are the basic functions you'll use for exploring your data frame once you import it. Make sure it's important correctly, the right size, getting an idea of what type of data types you have, that type of thing. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, I appreciate any sorts of likes, comments, subscribes, anything like that. And I hope you have a great rest of the day.